What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones Season 8 prediction video. Before I get started, I just want to give a quick reminder to those of you that may not have watched my last video. I am doing a new giveaway since Game of Thrones Season 7 comes out on Blu-ray and DVD next month. I will be giving two copies away so there will be two winners picked randomly. All you need to do is click the link and follow the instructions. You can put your name in the drawing multiple times, that way you can increase your chances of winning. That link will be posted at the top of the comment section, and it will be in the description of this video. Good luck to everyone who has entered, now let's begin. The other day I made a post on Twitter and Patreon letting everyone know that I will be doing a new Q&A video, and on those posts I asked you to leave any questions you might have regarding Game of Thrones, and more specifically Game of Thrones Season 8. I want to thank all of you for posting your questions, and if I don't happen to answer yours today, I will answer it in a later video because I did take screenshots of all the questions I did see. But now I want to go through some of the ones that I have here. The first question is from Peril Wolf. Do you think Daenerys will find out that Jon is her nephew, and if so, what do you think her reaction will be? After all, she is not the last Targaryen. I do think Daenerys will find out, and she's going to be shocked, just like anyone else would be. When this gets revealed, I think it's going to cause some real tension in their relationship, considering Jon would be the next rightful heir in line for the throne, and not Daenerys. This entire time, Daenerys has assumed she had the rightful claim over everyone else, but now we know that is not the case. But we also all know how Jon is, and he's not going to want to be concerned with sitting on the Iron Throne. I actually wouldn't be surprised if Jon just allowed Daenerys to have it, assuming Cersei is out of the way in the end. Maester Aemon also refused to sit on the Iron Throne when he could have, and I think Jon may do something very similar if given the opportunity. Maester Aemon gave Jon some wise advice back in Season 1, and I think this will come into play in the last season. If the day should ever come when your Lord Father was forced to choose between honor on the one hand and those he loves on the other, what would he do? He would do whatever was right, no matter what. Then Lord Stark is a man in 10,000. Most of us are not so strong. What is honor compared to a woman's love? And what is duty against the feel of a newborn son in your arms? Or a brother's smile? I believe Daenerys is going to be pregnant with Jon's child, so even if Jon and Daenerys end their relationship for political reasons or any other reason, I think Jon will do the right thing and make sure that his child is brought up the way that he would have liked to have been raised. Jon would never want to father a bastard. He has even said this himself before because he knows what that life is like. So we sat there in the brothel as Ros took off her clothes. But I couldn't do it. Because all I could think was, what if I got her pregnant? If she had a child, another bastard named Snow. It's not a good life for a child. With all the foreshadowing done during Season 7, I 100% believe Daenerys will be pregnant. They hinted at Jon having children, and they hinted at Daenerys not being able to have children multiple times. But even Jon told Daenerys that maybe Miri Mazdur was wrong. Maybe Daenerys can get pregnant. I've forfeited the right to claim this soul. It's yours. It serve you well your children after you. I believe Viserion's death was a payment for life. Danny may have lost a dragon, but she will gain a child. Like I said, Jon's gonna want to make sure his child is not a bastard like him, which means he would need to marry Daenerys, or he could just legitimize the child himself since he is the king. But we will have to see how this plays out in the final episodes because Jon could die in battle, or Daenerys could die in battle, or even during childbirth. Jon and Daenerys may have a few arguments over the season, but I don't think they're going to turn into enemies, but that's just my opinion. The next question is from Muhammad. What's Dario Naharis' role will be in the next war? I don't think he would just stay in Marine when he hear about the Golden Company coming to support Cersei against his love. Knowing Dario, I am sure he can't wait to leave Marine. He didn't want to stay there in the first place. He doesn't give two shits about that city. There's finally peace in Marine. You will keep the peace while the people choose their own leaders. Fuck Marine. F 
Fuck the people. I'm here for you, not them. You promised me. My sword is yours. My life is yours. But regardless of what the character might do, you have to consider what the showrunners might do, and as far as I know, they have no plans of bringing Dario back. We didn't see Dario last season, and there has been no sign of him this season either. There are no reports of him coming back, nor is there any photos of him on any set. I would like to see Dario again, and I know some people have speculated that he might be with the Golden Company, but they already casted that commander, and it's not the same guy who plays Dario. They could surprise us and bring him back, but I wouldn't count on it. There are already over 10 characters still alive that we haven't seen for a very long time. Even John's direwolf was not seen at all last season, and he should be near John at all times. So personally, I wouldn't bet on seeing Dario again. The next question is from RXIC Racing. Why didn't Robert kill the Mad King if he was a Targaryen? Well, we all know Robert would have killed any Targaryen he got his hands on. He said this himself. Daenerys Targaryen has wed some Dothraki horse, Lord. What of it? Should we send her a wedding gift? A knife, perhaps a good sharp one, and a bold man to wield it. She's little more than a child. What? Soon enough, that child will spread her legs and start breeding. Tell me we're not speaking of this. Oh, it's unspeakable to you? What her father did to your family, that was unspeakable. What Rhaegar Targaryen did to your sister, the woman I loved. I'll kill every Targaryen I get my hands on. You can't get your hands on this one, can you? I believe Robert would have killed the Mad King, but the only problem was Robert didn't get to him in time to kill him himself. When Robert met Rhaegar Targaryen on the battlefield at the Trident, Robert was actually injured during his fight against Rhaegar. Robert was able to kill Rhaegar with his Warhammer, but since he was injured, Robert actually had Ned go to King's Landing first in front of him, while Robert followed. When the word got out that Robert killed Rhaegar, Tywin used that as an opportunity to seize King's Landing himself and prove his loyalty to Robert, because Tywin knew Rhaegar was dead, and most of Rhaegar's men had retreated from the war. Tywin knew Robert was about to win the throne, so Tywin raced to King's Landing, and he got there before Ned or Robert could. When Tywin got to King's Landing, he tricked the Mad King into letting him into the city, and that's when Tywin ordered his men to start killing everyone. When the Mad King realized Tywin had tricked him, he knew his time was about to be up, so he ordered the Pyromancer to light the city on fire with wildfire. But Jaime was there as the Mad King's personal guard. When Jaime knew the Mad King was going to blow up the city, he killed the Mad King by stabbing him in the back. By the time Ned got there, the Mad King was already dead, and Robert arrived after Ned. The Mad King would have actually blown up the city before he allowed Robert to get to him and kill him, but if it wasn't for Jamie, that would have happened. That's why Robert wasn't able to kill the Mad King, because Jamie did it first before he even got there. The next question is from Daniel Bates. Do you think Nymeria and Ghost will share the screen in Winterfell? And if so, how soon? In a perfect world, I would have Nymeria and Ghost have a litter of pups to pass on to any future generation of Stark children. But that's assuming Jon, Sansa, or Arya will even have any children at all. But I think it would be nice if the Starks were able to get some more direwolves out of Ghost of Nymeria mating. But that doesn't seem likely considering the show doesn't want to spare any expense on direwolf scenes. I do think we will see Ghost again, but not so much for Nymeria. It kind of seemed like Arya already said her goodbye to Nymeria. I would be surprised if we did see her again, but I won't rule it out. But everyone was so pissed off we didn't get to see Ghost, I don't see how they can't include him in the last season. If they leave Ghost out again, there's going to be an outrage from the entire community. So I think when Jon arrives at Winterfell, I think they will at least show them to reunite. But I hope we get to see Ghost rip apart some whites too. The next question is from Promo. Who do you think will end up killing the Night King? And do you think Bran will be involved a lot? Bran Stark will definitely be involved. Bran and the Night King will be connected with each other until one of them dies. At the very least, Bran can continue to be their scout. Bran should be able to keep an eye on the Army of the Dead and the Night King's movements with the use of the Ravens. Bran can at least let everyone know where the Night King is at all times and how close he is getting to them. Now when it comes to killing the Night King, I think that may take a group effort. Jon, Daenerys, and Bran will probably all play a role in that. The Night King is the King of Ice, and Daenerys is the Queen of Fire, so I think those two will face off on the dragons very soon. But I also think Jon's gonna get a one vs one fight against the Night King also. Jon and the Night King have already had two epic stare-downs, there needs to be some kind of payoff or closure to that.
John wants to kill the Night King so bad he can taste it, and the Night King knows John is very special, that's why he keeps looking at John the way he does. Those two need to fight each other, and may the best man win. The next question is from Ed McClowski. For the amount of screen time given, relative to the book sections left out, was there any point to Dorn's storyline in real terms? To be honest, not really. I do want to say one thing though, I absolutely loved Oberyn Martell. The actor did such a great job, he made Oberyn one of my favorite characters of all time, but he didn't serve that much of a purpose either, other than fighting for Tyrion's life, and unfortunately, he lost. Besides Oberyn Martell, I didn't like anything else Dorne had to offer in the show. The only other part they really played was killing Cersei's daughter, that way the Maggie the Frog prophecy would be proven real. But I guess you could say Dorne helped Cersei and Euron form an alliance with each other, since Euron did use the Sand Snakes as his gift to Cersei. But there was probably other ways you could have done this. But since Dorne was already introduced in the show, it did give them something else to do with those characters. But I don't want to spend too much time beating up Dorne, because I feel like every other channel has already done this over the years. It's kind of like beating a dead horse at this point. But I just wanted to say that I loved Oberyn Martell, because I was glad they involved him in the story, but everything else I could have done without, to be honest. But that's just my opinion, it doesn't make it fact. The next question is from Tom Hendricks. How many episodes will the War with the Night King take, slash, War for the Throne? I'm gonna have to say three episodes at the most, because there was only six episodes left, and HBO hired three different directors to do those final six episodes. We already know Dan and Dave is gonna write and direct the final episode, but the other five episodes will be split between Miguel Sapochnik and David Nutter. Miguel Sapochnik is best known for his battle sequences because he directed Hardhome and Battle of the Bastards, and he will most likely direct the battle scenes in Season 8, too, since he is great at that. So I'm thinking he's going to direct two episodes at the least, but maybe even three episodes. Miguel should direct a big battle against the Night King and a big battle against Cersei, but he could possibly do one more smaller scale battle. I think the war against the Night King is going to take more than just one fight, but I think they could end the war with Cersei with just one episode of battling, but we will see. The next question is from Alex Ash. Will Bran forgive Jaime for pushing him from the window for all the good Jaime has done? I think when this eventually gets revealed that Jaime was the one who crippled Bran, it's going to be very interesting because I think the Starks are all going to feel very differently about this and about Jaime. I think Arya would want to kill Jaime right away, and maybe even Jon would too, but I do think Bran would forgive Jaime. When Bran was a little boy, he always felt terrible about his injury. He was sad that he would never become a knight, or just be able to do the things his brothers were doing. But now Bran looks at things through a different lens, and he may see all of this as his destiny. Things that needed to happen in order for him to become the Three-Eyed Raven. And with that in mind, he might give Jaime a pass. I do think Jaime still has a bigger role to play, and if you've seen any of my previous prediction videos, then you should know that I think Jaime will repay his debt to the Starks by saving one of their lives. The next question is from Christy. Do you think Cersei will forgive Bronn and send him after Jaime? And if so, where do you think they might meet up? I think Bronn might seek out Jaime or Tyrion on his own. Someone still owes Bronn a big-ass castle, and he's not gonna let all of his life-risking deeds go to waste. Bronn put his ass on the line too many times to just forget about what is owed to him. Now that Jaime has left King's Landing, I don't think Bronn has any reason to even stay there. I don't think we're gonna be seeing any scenes between Bronn and Cersei anytime soon, though. Bronn and Cersei are not allowed to be in the same scenes with each other, because that's actually a clause in their contracts. Apparently, Jerome and Lena dated many years ago, and their relationship ended pretty badly, and now they refuse to work with each other, so I don't know how Bronn would ever be able to work with Cersei. Unless it was all done through sending messages back and forth. When you consider that, I really don't see any other scenario that would work. In my opinion, Bronn's gonna go north too, but I'm not really sure when. Jamie might try and find him before he gets too far from King's Landing. I will answer one more question, then I will save some of these other ones for a future Q&A video. If you would like to ask any questions, put them in the comment section of this video, and the next time I make one, I will come back to this video and go through some of them. But the last question is from Aaron Bergman. Do you think we could see Uncle Benjen in Season 8? He seems to be much more than he seems, and what a shocker it would be if he suddenly appeared on his horse right next to the Night King. I know I'm alone, but I still think John was let go from the frozen lake rather than rescued slash escaped. I really love this question and I actually started to visualize it as I was reading it. 
The image of Benjen Star coming back riding a dead horse next to the Night King would be absolutely insane, and I would actually love to see that. I think it would be very cool, although I would hate to see Benjen dead, but the thought of that sounds kind of awesome. I actually made a prediction video a while ago and I kind of talked about this before. I always felt like Benjen would come back and John would actually have to be the one to kill him. John has always loved his uncle Benjen and for years he wondered if his uncle could really still be alive and out there beyond the wall somewhere. John did finally get to see his uncle again but the reunion was so short lived. I think it would be a Game of Thrones esque ending for Benjen if he came back and John actually had to be the one to kill him. It would be very heartbreaking for a lot of people, but it would need to be done or else Benjen could kill John or any of the other Starks. The reason why I think this is possible is because Benjen did die north of the wall surrounded by whites, and I bet the Night King would love to have a Stark in his army especially one of the Starks who was a first ranger of the Night's Watch. The Night King lost a lot of his soldiers when Daenerys started burning them all with their dragons, so he may have raised Benjen Stark to march in his army. The only problem I have with this is Benjen had dragon glass in his heart, so I'm not really sure how this would work. I always thought it was kind of weird how the Children of the Forest saved Benjen by stabbing him with dragon glass, but they also created the Night King the same way. So I really don't know what this would make Benjen right now and I'm not exactly sure how the Whites were going to be able to kill him since he was kind of one of them. But feel free to speculate all you want. Put all of your questions, theories, and thoughts down below in the comment section. Don't forget to enter the new giveaway if you want a chance to win Game of Thrones Season 7 on Blu-ray or DVD. I am giving two copies away, just make sure you click the link in the comment section or description of this video. I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of their day to watch this. I really appreciate that, and all of you who have supported this channel on Patreon. I hope everyone has a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.